Eyewitness News starts right now with breaking news. We have breaking news right now. Flames are ripping through an apartment building along Canal Boulevard in Charleston. Yeah, dozens of people are now homeless. The fire is not under control and the scene is still very active as all city firefighters are on scene. Now we do have live team coverage right now from reporters Daniel Burbank and Anna Saunders. So Daniel, we're going to start with you. You were on the scene within minutes. Tell us what you know. You know, Gina, Dave, this is really just devastating for everyone to watch, firefighters included. This building at the Regal Apartments is about 35 units. We were the first news crew on the scene, and so we've really watched all of this play out from the very beginning when some of the very first fire trucks arrived here. Earlier, we didn't see any of these flames or that thick gray-black smoke. It looks like it's actually calmed down just a little bit since a moment ago, but the flames, this is really devastating for the residents. We talked to really one who said that they probably lost everything. The American Red Cross is on scene arriving. They're going to help and they're going to help these residents really get through this because we heard that the roof is collapsed and that this is probably going to be a total loss. That coming from firefighters. We're still waiting to get the official word, but just given that the roof has collapsed and we're seeing just the thick smoke and the flames really continuing, all that water is going to go down to the second and the first floors and just completely waterlog this building. The mayor is on scene here also. She's talking with some of the residents. She's talking with other people, trying to reassure them that the, the fire department is here. They're doing everything that they can. And she is uh, also, you know, talking with the residents, too. So, I mean, the aspect of this, this is a major fire. And so all firefighters from the Charleston Fire Departments are here on scene. And so other fire departments in the area are also pitching in so that they can assist on other calls that are happening in and around Charleston. This is a very developing story. So make sure that you stay with Eyewitness News for the latest. But for now, live on the Canal Boulevard, Daniel Burbank, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Daniel. Continuing our team coverage now on this horrible fire. Eyewitness News reporter Anna Saunders is live. She's been talking with people who live there. And Anna, what are you learning right now? Yeah, we do know at this time it is believed that everyone made it out okay, but we are talking about 35 people who are now displaced, now without a home as crews continue to fight this fire. We have a bit of the, the side angle here on the other side of the boulevard. If you want to take a look at what's being done right now, still that heavy, that heavy, thick gray smoke. And many of the people who had to evacuate still around with some of them holding their pets as they watch their home still on fire. Um, as Daniel mentioned, and Red Cross is on scene and will be providing temporary relief. But what a loss this is for those who live there. Now, we did have a chance to speak with someone who did make it out, and here is what he had to say. I'm just glad um, that, number one, I, 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 I am safe. I am very thankful for the Charleston uh, Fire Department for just how swiftly um, they responded and how, how quickly they prioritized getting everyone out. Now, he also went on to say that there have been issues with this building in terms of, of code violations, definitely something to keep tabs on and follow up on, on in the coming days. But as you heard, a lot of people giving credit to those firefighters for getting them out safely. Firefighters who are still on scene, still working to get this horrible fire all under control. Going to send it back to you all in the studio. And now we're going to send things over to a meteorologist, Brandon Lawson. And Brandon, you've actually been uh, tracking the, the smoke. Yeah, that smoke again. It's been filling the city of Charleston. I actually want to show you. This is a live look. This use, usually is the Oakwood, Washington 501 camera, but they're looking across the river. You can see that smoke just extending out here. You got to remember, we're in a valley, folks. So again, this is going to continue to fill the city here. There's really nowhere for this smoke to go. It's not rising very high. I actually want to show you this is from Mick Wiseman, uh, one of my buddies of the city here. You can see this is just filling in to downtown here. Look at the smoke plume. So this isn't going to be good for your health either if you're going to be out in 
and about here with the smoke. Again, definitely not a healthy situation. I probably wouldn't extend any time outdoors here. I know this has been a gorgeous day. We're in the upper 50s. It's a bit breezy out there, but I just wouldn't recommend being out in this. This was actually shot by meteorologist Brandon Stover. You could see the smoke in the low levels here, but notice the clouds in the upper levels. So you've got south easterly winds at the surface, and you've got southwesterly winds at the upper levels here. They're blowing two totally different directions there. That is a sign that we have strong directional shear in the atmosphere, meaning that the winds are changing direction with height here. So kind of a good scientific explainer here as to why the clouds are going a different way than that smoke is moving. Notice the gusts here. We're still gusting between 25 and 35 miles per hour this evening. Another reason why that smoke's flying around out there. Charleston is saying calm for a wind gust right now. That's just because a gust isn't being clocked at the Yeager Airport. So again, if you're going to be out and about, we do have some showers trying to move into the Canal Valley, but something to mention here is that we have downslope flow here that is filling into the valley, which is actually drying things out here. This is why that rain, it looked a bit more widespread over the tri-state. Now it's moving into Charleston and it's kind of drying out. So even rain here, not going to be much help for those firefighters as they battle. Now we are tracking a little bit more rain back to the west as cold air continues to wrap it here. An area of low pressure continues to move through our area. Going to bring some snow showers likely to the areas we go into tonight. Temperatures warmer at 56 in Charleston, 55 in Heights, and 57 in Pressburg right now. Very mild air, kind of a, in this wedge here. We've got the warmer wedge over us because of the downslope flow. And then all around us, it's much colder. And that colder air is going to come back. If you are headed out to the Harlem Globetrotters tonight, Mountain Health Arena in Huntington will start at 48 degrees at 7, drop down to about 42 degrees. And again, we do have those showers that are trying to work through. I wouldn't recommend being outside here in Charleston right now with the smoke. And Dave, Gene, I understand we have an update from Daniel Burbank. That's right, Brandon. We're going to send it back out to Daniel Burbank real quickly over there where the fire's happening. Yeah, and Dave, Gina, we're back here with Mayor Amy Goodwin, and I mean, this is just an unbelievable sight to see, you know, especially in Charleston. I mean, for you as mayor, uh, you're out here really on the ground with everyone, and I mean, tell me kind of the reason why you came out uh, to the scene today. We have residents on the street who've lost every single thing that they own uh, in a fire this evening. So, uh, and our team members, my colleagues, are in there and fighting fires and uh, on big ladder trucks. So this is this is where uh, I need to be, um, but this is where I should be. We're working right now with everybody who's been displaced from the building. Uh, obviously, that's everyone. Nobody's going back in this building anytime soon, if at all ever. Uh, it's structurally unsound. Uh, our fire chief and our fire department obviously have been working diligently uh, trying to work on the flames, uh, trying to break down parts of the building so it won't spread to another building or buildings beside it. Uh, Mother Nature, the wind uh, is kicking up, so that's something that we're taking into consideration. But right now, this is a hard scene to look at for sure, but the best scene is all of the folks who are out, out of the building, and that's what's most important. We've heard so much about, you know, people talking about just the, the, the goodwill of the firefighters. They focused on getting people out. They focused on evacuating, you know, all of those people. And so that's got to be good to hear as, you know, the mayor of a city. From the human aspect, I mean, what, tell me what, what this is like for you to see. This is their job. This is our mission. This is what we do first and foremost. We're here to serve and we're here to protect the residents in the city of Charleston. Um, they're amazing folks. Our first responders are just amazing folks. Um, but our community, you all are so amazing uh, because you're springing into action already. My phone's ringing off the hook and people are flooding down waiting uh, to see what they can do. Um, right now what we're doing is, just for the folks who keep texting, thank you, um, we're assessing each and every resident and what their needs are. If it's medicine, if it's clothing, is it shelter for just tonight or for the week or for the month? Uh, and we're doing those assessment right now and thanks to the Red Cross us. They're on their way and we'll be setting up shelter and the residents right now uh, are safe inside the next church. Have we gotten to the next point where we talk about the donations? Have we, you know, with the Red Cross where do we know how many people are displaced at this time? Well, everybody who lived in the building. So we're talking about 25 to 27 uh, people uh, right now uh, that we know of that will be displaced or will need some type of service. Uh, so the Red Cross is amazing uh, at working uh, these uh, uh, these crisis and these tragedy situations. So we'll work hand in glove with them to make sure that folks need what they need. And 
everybody needs something different, right? Everyone will need um, their own particular things, whether it's medicine, food, water, shelter. So we're going to work with them, uh, not just today, uh, but for the long haul as well. I'm just thankful that our firefighters are safe <laughs> and the residents of this building are safe. That's what's most important to me right now and why I am so thankful. Absolutely. Any clothing, closing thoughts for anyone that might be watching tonight? You know, they're waiting to hear some extra pieces. Maybe it's the people that are, you know, watching their families sure. and know that there are families here. Is sure. there anything that, that you'd sure. like to reassure the city that's watching tonight? Yeah. Thank you for your outreach. Thank you so much for your support. Our firefighters, our EMS workers are taking really good care of the folks who are here. I I'm so happy to say that no one was trans transported uh, to any hospital with any uh, injury or any issue. Uh, but still, this is a really hard situation. And so think about everybody tonight, and, and we thank you for your good thoughts uh, for everybody here in the building and our firefighters. So thank you. And our police officers who have been out here, too, directing take a, a traffic. It, it, takes a, it takes a team. It really takes a team. Yeah. Mayor Goodwin, I can't thank, thank you. you enough. Be safe. And so, as we mentioned, you know, and one thing to note also is that we're feeling the temperature drop out here. It was a very nice day. It was in the 60s, and now we're starting to feel that temperature drop. And so, no doubt, uh, there's going to be people that are cold out here. And so, as uh, Mayor Goodwin mentioned, that that uh, they're going to have the Red Cross that's going to be out here and helping these people, and they're going to need it tonight. Gina, Dave, back to you. Thank you, Daniel. And make sure to follow this. The story is going to continue to develop and we will have more updates throughout the show. Now turning to the Capitol. Could the state agency that oversees utilities in West Virginia use some oversight itself? That's the question before lawmakers as the full Senate today passed a bill that would give the legislature oversight over how the state public service commissions lays out its rules and regulations. The Public Service Commission Chair, Charlotte Lane, has made it clear that she does not want this bill to be passed. She says it would slow their process down. And even though it does not give the legislature any sort of power or over utility rates and their case, Lane did say they have rules with over how other utilities are supposed to charge each other, which in return could impact the rates. The bill sponsor, Senator Jack Woodrum, says this is about giving the PSC the same oversight that other state agencies have when it comes to reviewing their rules. They'll, they'll submit those rules, and then over the course of the summer, we meet many times with the attorneys, their attorneys, and we go through the rules to make sure that the rule uh, does what the law says and to make sure it doesn't conflict with any other uh, bits of state code. Sen Senator Woodrum says he takes rate increases complaints often, but this proposed change will not affect this and disagrees with Lane in that will slow the PSC down. The bill will now head to the House of Delegates. PSC Chairman Charlotte Lane was not available for a one-on-one -on -one interview today and had no new comments following the bill's passage in the Senate. <music> West Virginia's governor finds efforts by the legislature to curb his emergency powers are a bad idea. But he tells Eyewitness News reporter Bob Aaron he won't veto the bill or challenge it in court if it makes it through the legislature. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice on the road in Parkersburg to push his plan to cut state income taxes says he won't veto a bill to curb his emergency powers. The state constitution gives the governor extensive emergency powers to deal with situations like flooding. But Justice's long-running state of emergency brought on by the pandemic that's killed more than 7,800 West Virginians clearly rubbed many senators and delegates the wrong way. Tuesday, the House passed a bill limiting the governor's emergency powers. A similar measure, Senate Bill 128, had passed that body, but the House version is even more restrictive and reflects many lawmakers' unhappiness with school closings, masking requirements, and other COVID spark restrictions. The House version passed 93 to 3. It says a state of emergency would last no longer than 60 days unless the legislature would extend it. Lawmakers would have to take action for any emergency declaration to be extended. The Senate version only requires the governor to notify lawmakers of an extension. Justice is concerned about the problems for future governors and said he would probably not veto the bill or challenge it in court if it passed. No, neither one. I mean, really and truly, you know, Bob, from my standpoint, I don't care. I really don't care. You know, at the end of the day, I do care about future governors, but the odds of having another significant emergency, you know, while I'm still here, are very minuscule. 
I am perfectly fine. I've said this 15 times. I'm fine with people taking a little bit of a sh shot at me. I'm just not fine at people taking a shot at West Virginia. Since there are differences between the measure passed by the Senate and what the House just approved, it'll go back to the Senate for further action. In Charleston, Bob Aaron, Eyewitness News. Well, the House has adopted Justice Income Tax Plan. Now, the Senate approach to a tax cut is still pending, but both Justice and House Finance Chair Vernon Chris said today in Parkersburg that any effort to raise the sales tax to offset a cut was a non-starter with the governor and the House. Senator Joe Manchin introduced the legislation today aimed at immediately closing a tax credit loophole in the Inflation Reduction Act. The West Virginia Democrats' bill would prohibit the Treasury Department from issuing $7,500 tax cuts for unqualified electric vehicles. Now, the credit was supposed to serve as an incentive to purchase EVs whose batteries are produced domestically. However, the Treasury has put off issuing rules for the credit until March, allowing many foreign cars a two-month window to benefit from the incentive. Coming up, America is sending tanks and now dramatically stepping up involvement in the war in Ukraine. We'll take a look at why in just a few minutes. Well, America is taking its role in the Ukraine war to a new level for the first time, sending tanks to help fight back against Russia. It reveals a, department from, a departure from President Biden's earlier stance on how involved the U.S. should be in this fight. Scott Thuman has the latest tonight. 31 specially armored, modern, and highly capable American M1 Abrams tanks, eventually on the way to Ukraine. More than just firepower, but a symbolic move, too. Putin expected Europe and the United States to weaken our resolve. He was wrong. For the past year, it's been heavily debated. If America's not inching toward a war, is it, at the very least, in a proxy war? I think the answer is yes. It's not just Russian war against Ukraine. Is America at war? What is the line? We spoke to former diplomat Kurt Volker, who served as the U.S. ambassador to NATO and special representative for Ukraine, and who disagrees. In terms of a proxy war, it means that we would be trying to use Ukraine to somehow advance our own goals. No one's threatening Moscow. No one is saying we need to take over that country. It is all about Ukraine defending itself. That support is increasingly widespread, experts say. By the end of last year, we'd spent more than $50 billion on military and humanitarian aid, not to mention critical strategic intelligence sharing, and now that top-of-the-line hardware in those 31 Abrams tanks which could take months to build, train Ukraine soldiers on, and deliver. Critics worry too much is being provided a country also in the midst of a sweeping government shakeup, President Zelensky firing officials in another corruption scandal. I think we always have to worry about how much we're spending overseas, and that's why I think it's important that any dollars that go to Ukraine, we have inspector general. But others blame the Biden administration for dragging its feet, taking much too long to give Ukraine what's been needed all along. We knew months and months ago that Ukraine needed tanks, that they needed better air defenses. And we've been very slow in making decisions and rolling them out. And the slower we are, the more Russia attacks and the more Ukrainian people suffer. And America now a larger part of that battle. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. Well, today may have been the last day to enjoy the warmth. Meteorologist Brandon Lawson will have your full forecast and what we can expect for the rest of the week. We have breaking news right now. Flames are ripping through an apartment building along Canal Boulevard in Charleston. Yeah, dozens of people are now homeless. The fire is not under complete control just yet, and the scene is still very active as uh, city firefighters are on scene. We have live team coverage right now from reporters Daniel Burbank and Anna Saunders. And Daniel, you're on the scene within minutes. What can you tell us? What's the latest? You know, Gina, Dave, the fire taking literally a dramatic turn where the smoke is now billowing the opposite direction. The wind, the weather could be playing a role in really the fight against this fire and the difficulties with this fire. You know, as we said, the smoke 
uh, was going the opposite direction here just only three minutes ago, and so that creates additional challenges for firefighters. We saw that firefighters were knocking out uh, some of the windows in the front of the building. They're now putting some of the fire lines, the fire hoses, they're blasting water into what I believe to be the stairwell leading from the second to the third floor, and uh, they're saying that this is actually spreading very rapidly. We already said that the roof is collapsed, and that was about an hour ago or so that that roof collapsed. I did talk with a uh, resident who of the One Morris building, which is owned by and managed rather by the same company that manages the Regal Apartments, and they said that they had some issues with some fire alarms in the past, and they are, uh, they tried to get management to work on the fire alarms and, and, and this resident said that, that they were working for a while and then they're not working and so when we were here and really throughout the entirety of this fire I haven't heard a fire alarm in the building, a smoke alarm, I haven't heard that and we've really been here since the very beginning as we mentioned we were the first news crew on the scene when this first broke out and we were watching them shut down Kanawha Boulevard that is one thing to also note is that Kanawha Boulevard is still shut down in both directions and it's going to be shut down in both directions. The wind is now picking up in intensity. The smoke actually heading uh, directly for uh, the media staging area. And so this uh, thick smoke, you can see it. We've heard people talking that they can see it all really through the Kanawha Valley. Now, one thing to also note is that the Red Cross has set up a shelter just by the church. And that is located just two buildings down to the left of the Regal Apartments. We heard that uh, the Red Cross is, is really going to start focusing on, okay, we already heard the mayor say that, that she knows, the fire department knows, that no one is going to be really allowed back into this building, not only until they know that, that uh, the fire is out, but it's a good chance that, that there will be nothing left. In, in certain areas of the building. So they're focusing on, okay, do we need to have the Red Cross set up for a day, for two days, for a week? And so all of this is developing very rapidly and, and they're negotiating, rather, they're talking about that inside the church at this very moment. So we saw a couple people, uh, just neighbors, just friends, just people who saw this on, on television and came down to bring bottles of water for the firefighters, for the residents, for everyone, because this is such a, a big fire in terms of the amount of people that are impacted. We heard the mayor say that there's about 25 to 27 people that are affected. We heard that there could be 35 units. We're still working to confirm that number. But regardless, we know that there's still at least two dozen people that are going to be displaced by this fire. Again, we don't know for how long. So we're going to try and talk with some some of the firefighters coming up here very soon uh, and we're going to get all of that latest information so as this continues to develop just make sure that you stay tuned to eyewitness news for all of the latest information gina dave back to you all right thank you daniel and we continue our team coverage right now with anna saunders who is also live down at the scene and anna you've been talking with people all afternoon what are you learning right now yeah, 35 people displaced from this fire, and I'm standing with someone right now who has been impacted. This is Martin Peterson. Martin, walk me through the, this evening what has happened. I, I was down in Dunbar. My son called me. He said, the place is on fire. I thought he was joking. So I came down here. I was doing about 90, about 100 down from Dunbar this way, and I seen the smoke, and that's when I did fast, you know, drove faster. And 12 fire department blocked me from going in to get my dog. I even called 911 and said there was a dog up there. And I don't know, when I got here, he was the last one that came out. They brought my dog out, but he was all red in the face, like oxygen, he, was, he lost some oxygen. But we just moved here um, two months ago from Chicago, come back to West Virginia, because I love it here. And I had a second fire been in from two years ago, one in Dunbar, now this one. But this place was unsafe to rent. And I, me and my girlfriend's handicapped, and they put us on the, they say it's the third floor. They said, they told me it was the second floor. And I, they got bad wiring, everything. The alarm goes off every week, everything. And they're having problems with this place. And I got insurance, but I don't know if that's gonna cover anything what I lost. But I'm glad my dog and my girlfriend's okay. It's, I'm, I just hate for these people to go through this when the fire marshal should have checked these buildings 
they're getting paid or something to let something like this happen. You know, I, mean, I mean, you're clearly very emotional right now. Walk me through just what's going through your head as you try to process all of this. I hurt. You know, I feel sorry for the people what they lost. You know, this is West Virginia. We're supposed to stick together. Any kind of relationships or fires or, or viruses, we're supposed to love each other here. And there's a lot of hate here in West Virginia now since I've been gone two years. And I come back because I want to give that love back to these people. What people lost here. They love just homeless people here that's losing everything. They keep going back to the streets for some what? Drugs? Yeah, talk to me about where, with just the, the, the temporary situation right now, you're staying in the church. Is that where they've got you? They told us to stand there and wait till the mayor came. I don't know what they're going to do for us. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm lost right now again. You know, they might, right, Red Cross will help probably, but that ain't going to do what two days in a hotel like they did last two years ago. And then you're back out on the street. I mean, we lost everything. Oh, her, my, my, my girlfriend's got her medicine up there, but she could probably go to the hospital and, and get medication. It's cooming in. And, but there's other people. You know, just me. I'm, we're safe right now. Got my dog. He was more concerned I would have died for him. I, but they kept me from going up there. I just, I just hope, it's just, I'm shook up for these people, too. I, it ain't just my family. It's, it's everybody that lives there, you know. And I did so much for the maintenance for nothing. I cut trees down for them for nothing and bushes so there wouldn't be no people be sleeping behind there and going through the trash. I tried to keep it clean, but now the maintenance didn't keep, or the fire marshal didn't check the wiring. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm thinking it was the wiring because it's a special. And they should have never passed and let people live here. Because I could tell it's an old building and a lot of issues. I've been in a lot of places, and fire marshals, I hate to say this, but they get paid off just to go through the situations. They don't have to go through the, and these people that change this and that, you know, fuse boxes and wiring. There's a lot of work in that, but they should have had more than manager to even notify me when this place, nobody notified. We had to call the fire department to make sure it was on fire. We are, we're so sorry for your loss, and we hope things just continue to, to get better for you. I hope you can get I some shelter. So yeah, so sorry. Again, there's a lot of emotions here tonight as these people try to figure out what's next for them. People are being housed here along Canal Boulevard temporarily at the church. Uh, Red Cross is also on scene helping them. For now, live in Charleston, Anna Saunders, Eyewitness News. Powerful, raw statements from Martin Peterson. Anna yeah. just interviewed him. It really makes you thankful for what you have when you hear the way he described what he's going through. You know, luckily his girlfriend and his dog are both safe. Yeah. But so many other families, like he said, they're homeless tonight. So, of course, we all here wish them the very best. Yes, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Our hearts with that entire sure. community yeah. tonight. So, Brandon, you've been keeping an eye on the wind and a lot of smoke right here on yeah. the east end of Charleston. Uh, are we seeing it lift or dissipate much? Well, we actually just had kind of a shower push through, and that shower actually accelerated those gusts a little bit. You kind of saw those light raindrops coming down the lens, and some of that smoke now, again, like Daniel was saying, is moving the, towards them just because that shower is moving through. I do want to give you some pictures of, again, the smoke that continues to fill into the city. This is from Mick Wiseman, and, I mean, you could just see the first the dark plume there that comes out from the building, and then how the smoke is just extending from the building. Building there. I mean, this is from downtown Charleston here. You can just see all the smoke really feeling good here. I, again, if you live in downtown Charleston, really live in anywhere within the inner city of Charleston, you probably don't want to be outdoors at all with this. Again, with the smoke coming through, it's definitely a health risk for you as well. And these firefighters, again, they're not only dealing with the sustained winds that are between 10 and 20 miles per hour, but you also have those gusts between 25 and 35 miles per hour right now. And we actually just had that light shower move through. This area of low pressure continuing to move through our area here. It's bringing in that moisture as well. And you can see this lighter band of showers that is rolling through the Canal Valley right now. We actually had some downsloping wind, and we still have that downslope wind, which tends to dry things out around here. But still, even with the lighter showers moving through, that's going to increase the gusts a little bit. So again, we were talking about gusts between 25 and 35 miles per hour, but now those gusts get accelerating a little bit as this lighter band of rainfall, this light rain moves 
through the area. Now, good thing with this, we're not dealing with any thunderstorms here, not dealing with any lightning. So no safety risks there for those firefighters as they continue to battle the fire. And a lot of folks that are out there in the Canal Boulevard right now. Just going to be some light rain. Also some light rain moving through the coal fields. And we've got a lot more moisture on its way, folks. Again, this is kind of a similar setup to what we've seen throughout the last couple of weeks. We get a little bit of rain, even some thunderstorms, and then all of a sudden colder air fills back in. So we're at 56 right now in Charleston, but we've got much colder air back to our northwest here. 30s in Indianapolis right now, 40s in Columbus, and that colder air is moving our way. So winter going to make a return tomorrow, a gloomy, gloomy close to the work week here. And the weekend's going to bring kind of good and bad weather here. I'll explain momentarily, but first Thursday, Friday, as we close out the work week, we're back in the 30s. Here. We're at 50 degrees on Saturday. That's the good part about the weekend. We'll be a tad warm for Saturday and dry, but then by Sunday, we kind of get more seasonable again, and showers will return for Sunday as well. We do have scattered snow showers to track later into tonight. You can see those showers moving in, likely a wintry mix in the morning. I'm thinking rain and snow, maybe some sleep mixing in. I don't think we'll see freezing rain. Temperatures, for the most part, will actually stay above freezing. Some of the bridges and overpasses you'll have to watch in the morning. But notice how these scattered snow showers just continue on and all throughout the day tomorrow. It's going to take a while for those snow showers to taper off. I'm thinking Friday morning we'll start to see those snow showers taper off. Then by Friday afternoon, we start seeing a bit more sunshine around here. Not a big snow out of all this. I know snow lovers are probably very upset that we aren't seeing what we saw last year in January. January 2022, we saw over 20 inches of snowfall this January. We haven't even seen an inch yet. Now, I am tracking the ice risk for tonight. Just a low threat. Again, the bridges, overpasses, elevated roads will be the main concern. Most temperatures again tonight should stay above that freezing mark. So I want to talk about these wind gusts for a little bit. Firefighters, again, they're out there battling that fire on Canal Boulevard. These gusts are going to continue throughout the night. I'm thinking between 25 and 35 miles per hour and stay strong as we go into tomorrow morning. Now, breeze will, st will still be pretty breezy breezy tomorrow, but gust wise will be a little bit weaker in regards to those wind gusts. The cold air returns tomorrow. Again, we're looking at upper 30 scattered snow showers. Your seven day forecast looks like this. By Friday, we'll start to see those snow showers taper off in the morning, a bit drier for the afternoon. Temperatures still in the upper 30s. It's Saturday. We're at 50 degrees. Then there's Sunday showers return. And next week right now looks pretty gloomy, but temperatures look to remain seasonable as we go through Monday and Wednesday. Brandon, thank you. Don't go away. In just two minutes, we're going to bring you another live update from Charleston as crews fight an apartment fire. We'll be right back. We continue to follow this fire that's erupted in an apartment building. Uh, we're going to head back to the scene right now. Yeah, just real briefly to catch up to speed. Regal Apartments in the 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East caught fire about an hour and a half ago. Everyone did get out safely. Nobody got hurt, thankfully. But keep in mind, if you're traveling that direction, Canal Boulevard is shut down between Ruffner and Bradford Street. Let's go straight to Eyewitness News anchor Daniel Burbank. Daniel, what's an update from your perspective? They're on the scene. Gina, Dave, the situation continuing to evolve. Here live is Mayor Goodwin and Captain Hodges. We'll, we'll talk to you in just a second here, but let's talk about the Red Cross relief effort. So kind of where are we with uh, the Red Cross at this point? Sure, the Red Cross arrived about 20 minutes ago on scene. It's always great to see the Red Cross arrive. They're an amazing organization. They have amazing, amazing structure uh, and protocol, uh, and their main focus is to make sure that people are being taken care of. We have a lot of people who are going to be displaced tonight who need medicine, who need food, uh, who need shelter, maybe not just for tonight, uh, but for long term, because obviously, as Captain Hodges will tell you, uh, this building is completely structurally unsound, um, and a lot of folks are losing everything that they have, and we're going to have to make sure that their critical needs, their essential needs, are taken care of right this very moment. They're in the church that's beside the building right now, but this isn't just for tonight. This is going to be ongoing for sure. And we hear that the Red Cross, I mean, just 10, 15 minutes ago arriving, you know, handling, assessing the situation basically to see, as you just mentioned, all of the needs. So where where are they at this point in time in terms of do they need water? Do these people need maybe diapers for babies? Do we kind of know where they're at at this moment? Sure, the Red Cross is a well-oiled machine. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I've worked with them uh, for over 30 years. And what they'll do 
is what they do best, individual needs, individual assessments, because that's what's really important right now. Charleston is such a loving and giving community. It's why I love being the mayor here. Uh, but they're going to let us know sooner rather than later of how we may help, we as a community, how we may be helpful to not only the residents here, but to firefighters or the emergency workers who are here on the ground trying to do those assessments. And Mayor Goodwin, just an emotional day. We've seen people, we've seen firefighters, we've seen everyone. They're, they're really, it, it, it hits home when we see a, a situation like this. And this is something that, you know, you've seen and, and just mentioned working with, you know, the Red Cross. And so as, as the voice of reason, as the mayor of Charleston, to people watching tonight, you know, do you have a message for them? I'm thankful everybody is out safe. I am thankful that we are here. Our firefighters are doing an amazing job. We have such an amazing and talented team. Uh, but most important, thank you for um, praying and thinking about the folks who are here uh, and doing what you can, which is right now, uh, be on standby to when the Red Cross needs you or when our firefighters need you. Um, but, but thanks, thanks to the city of Charleston. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be a long night for sure and a long couple of weeks and months ahead for a lot of folks. And definitely a long night ahead. Are you planning to be here throughout the night with these people? Yeah, I'm not leaving. Mayor Goodwin, thank you, thank you. so much for talking thank with you. us. Captain Hodges, yes. thank you for waiting very yes. patiently. Yes. So let's kind of get an update based on the latest of what you know uh, with this fire. We see behind us the, the flames continuing to grow. The black smoke, thick black smoke is back. And I mean, this is something that you're probably used to, but on the same hand, every fire is unique in some way. Is that correct? Yes, and this is a larger scale for our, a fire for us here in Charleston. Uh, we do uh, handle a lot of residential structure fires. However, something of this magnitude, a four-story building with this much involvement, uh, is not of the norm for us. Uh, our guys do, we constantly train for these events. Uh, so, you know, we, we were on it, very quick response, very aggressive response and attack. However, it uh, looks like the fire started uh, in, in the roofing between the ceilings of the fourth floor to the roofing, a cockloft area, so it's very difficult to access. So that, that's posed problems throughout the whole afternoon. Uh, and then it immediately created an unstable roof, so it's making it difficult for us to attack. Uh, so we, and now we're dealing with the wind. You can see the different positions of the fire has been chasing throughout the building due to it being wind driven. Uh, so we, we've been here roughly three hours into it and we are still aggressively fighting the fire three hours into it. And, and three hours in, I mean, how are the firefighters holding up? Are, are, are they okay? Are they getting the water? Are they getting, you know, the supplies that they need? Yeah, so we're, we're, we've upgraded at multiple alarms. Uh, so we roughly have 75 firefighters operating here at the scene right now. Uh, and, and if we need to, we've got a, a, a more available in the city that we can move in to start rotating through. That is something we will probably begin doing here shortly is rotating some of the firefighters out and fresh folks in just to get some rest. Uh, you know, worry about the other logistics, feeding our firefighters uh, and, and hydrating them and things like that. So uh, we got a lot of work for us over the evening. Uh, so we'll, we'll be here for a while. No doubt for a while. Is there any closing thoughts that uh, either for the families that are watching or for people, you know, obviously we, we want people to stay out of the area, but is there anything else, you know, for the people that are watching? No, just, uh, it, you know, it's just unfortunate for the folks that are going to be unhoused uh, to do this event where the city, as the mayor said, just reiterate what she said. We're going to continue to work with Red Cross. Those folks are going to have shelter tonight and going forward long term, we're going to help facilitate that in any way possible and, and, and to meet all their needs. And just one final question before we go here, uh, talking about really the mental health aspect of all of this. This is obviously a major fire and you're watching people either in shock or crying and they're leaning on all of you guys really. And, and so how, how do you all handle that, especially as, as captain? Well, you know, so uh, one of the gentlemen that, that's missed this place due to this fire, he, he actually come and shook my hand a second ago in the midst of this, and he just said, "Can you, Captain, can you tell your firefighters I really appreciate everything you're doing for me, even though I'm homeless? So I reassured him. I said, my friend, you're not homeless. You're just temporary displaced from your home. We're going to help you. Uh, the city's full of love and resources, so we're going to help you. So, yeah, we're going to help lean on those folks, provide them all the support they can to reassure them that we're here for them very powerful words. Captain Hodges, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. And that was as we spoke to the mayor and just kind of recapping, if you're just tuning in with Captain Hodges, saying 75 firefighters are on scene. We heard that that is most, if not all of the firefighters in the Charleston Fire Department, each of the divisions, the stations. And so one thing that we heard earlier is that other nearby cities are preparing and they're ready to go to any other call 
if the Charleston city needs any other firefighters. And as Captain Hodges said, that they also are uh, preparing to maybe rotate out some of their own firefighters because they've been working for hours and hours trying to knock down this fire. And he says that just because of the wind and just the elements, uh, it's posing some challenges and that they have to just keep on fighting this the best that they can. So we're going to send it back to you. We're going to keep on working here. All of this very developing. Uh, one thing before we do send it back is that uh, the Red Cross is here. They have set up shop and they're going to start evaluating the scene to see how many people, uh, how much food, all of the necessities. That's according to Mayor Goodwin. So for now, live in Charleston, Daniel Burbank, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Daniel. And we will continue to monitor this we will make sure to follow all of our platforms. We will go back to the scene in just two minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us tonight. Let's head to Charleston for another update on the current apartment fire. Yeah, this happened at the Regal Apartments about three hours ago, 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East. Nobody got hurt, but more than two dozen people are now homeless. We're gonna send it straight to Anna Saunders, who is live on the scene. Anna, what's the latest? Yeah, Dave, Dina, we just continue to hear more and more heartbreaking stories from people who live there who are now displaced. I'm standing with one of them right now. This is John Van Wyck. John, talk me through uh, just the afternoon, the evening, what you heard, what you saw, everything. I was inside watching TV and I smelled some electrical that was burning. Of course, I know what electrical smells like. And I went outside and my neighbor came out and uh, kept smelling the small, the strong odor. And I said, well, I'm going to call 911. And about that time, the, the fire department showed up. There was no alarm going off at any of this time. And after that, I made sure that my neighbors got out best I could. I know when we first got here on scene, it was just kind of smoke coming out of the vents. And now as you take a look at what's going on behind us, I mean, what, what's going through your head there? This is the biggest fire I've ever seen. And, and of course, I've not seen very many, but they've been on this for hours. And I don't see it stopping with the rubber roofing and the old wood. And now it's dropping down through the different uh, floors. So I, this is bad. This is real bad. Yeah, we were just talking. You have quite the powerful story. You've only lived in this building for two weeks. Talk, talk, about, talk about your story. Yeah. Uh, been homeless for a couple years. Things have been bad. And uh, uh, two weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to get this place. And now I've lost everything I got again. So that's all right. I'm going to knock down. I'll get up. West Virginia strong. Tell me, I mean, what is your plan for the night? I know they have some people set up at the church. What, what is I want to uh, say thanks a lot to the mayor coming down here, and she's got some things lined up for us. Haven't found out what, but she's getting Red Cross and supposed to help us out. I know Red Cross is here. Have you spoken with them yet? Have you got Signed a piece of paper. It's all I've done. So I'm sure they'll get a hold of us when they find out something. And just to see this right now, still up in flames, still smoking, what can be said? It's devastation. I'm not the only one. A guy that I talked to earlier has been here two days. Another guy came in with me two weeks ago. So this is devastating. You're just like, you know, you finally get something, and then it gets taken away from you that quick. And it's just like, you never know. But I'm alive. I'm not hurt. And I'm glad for that. And, you know, God bless me says of that. So. And talk to us about the evacuation process. I guess you were on the first floor. But for everybody else, I mean, was it just kind of fast-paced in there? Or what was that like well, after, after I heard the truck come, the, the, the fire department came in. Once that happened, I got my neighbor and I out. She had cats. I made sure she got her cats out. and Everybody else was pretty much going out, and they were going through getting people out at the time. But like I said, there wasn't no alarm on it, so nobody really knew nothing. And then I walked outside and saw the flames coming out of the roof. But it's gotten, I'd say, twice as big now than it was when it first started. I mean, because I guess they just can't get the rubber roof out. And that's without all that old wood in there. I don't know how old the biz building is, but I know it's got nothing but wood floors in it. So that's just like accelerant. So I don't know. It just looks bad. You know, when they got as many trucks down here they have, they got water going everywhere, and especially on the houses to the side. My hat's off to the fire department. They've been on it. They really have, and they've done a great job and appreciate what they do because they're making their money today. Just talk for the people at home, explain the emotions you're going through right now, if you, if you can put it into words, just, just what this is truly like for you. Well, you know, they say God don't give you no more than you can handle. Well, I, I, I'm not going to argue with it, so, because like I said, I'm here. I'm not, I'm not hurt. 
what I lost, I'll get it back, you know, just like I said, you get knocked down, get back up. And I, same same with the people else that I've talked to, too. They're, you know, they're devastated. One guy, he don't have, you know, he's looking for his radio, the phone charger. And I said, I have one in my car, so I was going to give him that. But it's just devastating. I mean, it's unreal. It's unreal. I've never had to go through this, and I don't want to go through it again, that's for sure. John, showing, showing some incredible strength for us tonight. We are so, Thank so you. sorry. Appreciate Please hang in there. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Again, we just continue to hear more stories from people involved, and we'll continue to bring those to you throughout the evening as we follow this coverage. I can tell you right now we are starting to feel those rain droplets, so hopefully that can help with some relief as these firefighters continue to fight this fire. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you all in the studio. All right, Anna, thank you. We are seeing a few showers move through, and those showers are actually bringing some gustier winds, too, with them. I want to show you a little bit of the smoke that is just across the Canal River here. I mean, you can see the smoke just continuing to fill into the city here. And remember, we are valley here, so this smoke is just going to continue to kind of fill in here because it just really doesn't have anywhere else to go. So you can see that smoke continuing to extend from the fire itself. 56 right degrees right now, and I want to show you your wind. Still that strong southerly wind right now, 7 miles per hour, but we're gusting between 25 and 35 miles per hour and possibly even higher than that. I want to show you a video that meteorologist Brand Stover took earlier. This is the smoke plume here. Many folks are seeing this. The smoke plume going a different direction at the surface than the upper level winds here. So the upper level winds were moving southeasterly here because you've got a southeasterly wind in the upper levels. Then at the surface, you can see the, the smoke plume is moving to the southwest there because there's southwesterly winds. So just uh, showing strong direction actual shear of the atmosphere, me and the winds are changing with height here. And we have just seen so many pictures, images, videos uh, come in. You can imagine this is obviously uh, creating a stir on social media. We've seen a lot of pictures of smoke, also video of smoke as well. Um, and again, this is the social media post we have seen. I want to show you one from Ariana Saunders earlier. This was uh, just first initial videos here of the fire as it, it just started. I mean, you can just see that heavy smoke and the flames uh, causing the major issues for those firefighters there. I also want to show you how this is filling into the city. This was from uh, Mick Wiseman here. Look at how the smoke is just completely taking over downtown Charleston here. Uh, this is a health concern too. Folks that aren't even involved with this fires. You're out and about in the smoke. Definitely not good for you to be breathing this in. This was actually just up on a hill here. Uh, this was uh, a Twitter post that was uh, their name James. They're saying they went for a walk today. And as you go for the walk, you can see that fire, especially the higher up you are. I was showing you that shot earlier across the river there of uh, the, just that smoke. And here's one more here for you. This is Harry Bell. Owns, owns a law firm in um, the city. And just look at that smoke here, folks. I mean, these these kind of get harder and harder to look at, just seeing the smoke from the apartment fire here. Harry Bell even putting in some notes here uh, saying some horrible news about the Regal apartment fire in Charleston, West Virginia. There have been there are some options for apartments nearby, folks who are displaced, and just kind of just telling folks, you know, there's way, there's places for people to go in all this. We're going to continue to follow not only the weather situation with this. Again, we're dealing with gusty winds. We've got a gusty line of showers moving through, although that rain is coming down. Down, that gust could make it more challenging for the firefighters. So we're not only tracking the weather side of this, but also tracking the social media side too. And we'll continue to we'll continue to provide you uh, complete updates here as we go into the, our six o'clock news here soon. So we're going to send these back over to Dave and Gina for now. All right, thank you. Thanks, Brandon. We appreciate that. Also, just to recap for you, if you've just tuned in over the past couple of minutes, there has been a huge apartment fire right in the east end of Charleston on Canal Boulevard, east in the 1400 block. It's the Regal Apartments. It happened about a little more than three yeah. hours ago. We also want to uh, let you keep in mind that Canal Boulevard is shut down right now, and it's between Ruffner Avenue and Bradford Street, Street where traffic is impassable. Uh, there are more than 70 firefighters on scene. We believe that's all the firefighters in the city. Uh, we've heard from two people, from Anna Saunders, um, just heartbreaking stories of a loss. Yeah, one of the guys actually told us that when he got to the scene, he went immediately, he tried to get to the scene to go inside and rescue his dog. Mm -hmm. Firefighters wouldn't let him, and they told him he was the last one to to get the dog out. So we're going to stay on top of this tonight. Stay with Eyewitness News because we are going to continue covering this horrible situation. And you can see right here, this is live video 
from right there at the Regal Apartments. Uh, we have crews there on the scene. We've been there for the past couple hours. You can see them dragging a fire hose. Uh, they're still working diligently trying to get the fire out. Apparently it's starting to come down in the center, like the ceiling uh, possibly is collapsing. You can see the big ladder truck up there spraying water down onto the top of the building. People outside taking video clips. So uh, we will keep our eye on this for you. We will have more comprehensive coverage right here on Eyewitness News for the next hour. So stay with us and we will go back live with our Eyewitness News uh, team with Anna Saunders as well as Daniel Burbank. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Everybody. Eyewitness News starts right now with breaking news. We have breaking news right now. Flames are ripping through an apartment building along Canal Boulevard in Charleston. Yeah, dozens of people are now homeless. Now, the fire is not completely under control, and the scene is very active as we speak. In fact, all city firefighters are on scene, more than 70 of them. Now, we do have live team coverage right now from reporters Daniel Burbank and Anna Saunders. And Daniel, you were on scene within minutes. What do we know right now? Gina, Dave, the Red Cross is now boots on the ground. They're here walking the streets, just trying to get additional information from firefighters. And they're also talking with the residents who are staging at a nearby church just two buildings away from where their home has now pretty much gone up in flames almost completely. We're back here with uh, uh, Captain Dodge Hodges. And so let's kind of talk about, you know, what where we are in terms of fighting this fire at this time. So we're, we're still attempting to get water on the fire, as you can see. Uh, the multiple layers of roofing and just given the construction of the building, it's very difficult for us to gain access. Uh, the Probably the biggest factor right now is us gaining access and aggressively fighting it from the inside is the instability of the building. So that's hampering a lot of our uh, efforts right now. Uh, we are working right now with the building commissioner of the city. Uh, the fire chief will make this decision here shortly. We are considering beginning some demolition of the building with heavy equipment uh, just so we can put this to rest. Uh, so that's where we're at. We're still, again, working with the Red Cross uh, between the fire department and the city of Charleston, uh, we're trying to help all the folks, make sure everything's safe, keeping all of our firefighters safe, keeping them out of that collapse zone, uh, and, again, just trying to protect the exposures. And so let's just talk about, you know, an if scenario, because we said that is a possibility of where they're going to start demoing the building. What kind of fits the criteria for that to happen? And when that happens, how does the demo take place during the fire? So the city, actually, we have contract services available. Uh, and, you know, the fire chief under West Virginia State Code can order the demolition of a building in a fire uh, to prevent fire spread or further damage. So we, we can make that decision here right now. Uh, excavators are on standby to come in. Uh, so, and he'll, he'll just, these are trained folks in his expertise. He'll begin chipping away at the top, uh, getting access to us so we can access the fire. And uh, event, ultimately, the building will just eventually all come down. Absolutely. I mean, just looking, we saw that there's flames, you know, on the fourth floor just throughout. I, we could visually just see that right now, especially with all the smoke. So, you know, how is the other buildings doing? Is there any concern, you know, with the surrounding buildings? You know, how are you guys keeping those safe as well? So, we, you know, with all the hoses, you can see the water's flowing. Uh, the only concern that we have for any of the buildings right now is not fire spread. It is the collapse. Uh, so right now we do, we have noted some structural instabilities and some potential f collapse areas. Uh, so that is a concern. We're keeping our folks out of it, uh, keeping the folks out of those neighboring buildings that, that could be in that. Uh, but right now we're comfortable. Uh, we're, we fair, think everything's going to be safe. Uh, we just want to err on the side of caution. Absolutely. And so the firefighters, they've since been pulled out of the building probably long ago. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, we, we've pulled all the firefighters out of the building. Uh, since we did our evacuation of the firefighters, we did uh, make one entry since then. A uh, resident reported that he did have a dog in his apartment. Uh, the crews were able to uh, make a push in and actually found the dog and carried it out. The dog was fine. It was very happy to meet its owner. The owner was, I think, more happy to see his dog. So that's the only time since we've been back into the building. Uh, that since we've get the evacuation orders. I mean, on the topic of pets, obviously, you know, we know that people are okay, correct? Sure. 
Yes, yes. As of right now, uh, all occupants or tenants of the building have been accounted for and safe. And so we know that at this time there's no injuries with any of those tenants, the residents. Do we know about the situation with pets other than that one, you know, we, animal? We do not. No one has reported any other animals to us. Uh, unfortunately, it is common though. Uh, in, in large scale events like this that after the fact you will find or neighbors or I'm sorry tenants will report that they did lose a cat or a dog or or whatnot. Okay. Is there any closing thoughts for any of our viewers that are that are you know watching tonight that uh, that you'd like them to know? No you know and, and just we just want to encourage everyone uh, smoke detectors they do save lives so uh, early notification if we do have smoke detectors going uh, we, we, we ask that you, if you don't have them in your home, reach out to your local fire department. Uh, they can save life and early notification saves property. All right, Captain Hodges, I really appreciate you, yes, you know, sir. talking to us live yes, and sir. be Thank safe you. out there with Captain. your firefighters. And so, you know, this situation is continuing to evolve. You know, they did mention, just kind of recapping uh, what the captain said, is that uh, they pulled their firefighters out long ago. They were able to rescue one dog, and so it sounds like uh, they are safe. Yes, yes, sir. Are I'm, you a I'm resident? Of, yes, I'm a resident. I'm on the first floor. The lights, the, look, it's fire now, fire now. But Jan Dill is my lawyer, and she's going to take care of this. Was, well, we appreciate We'll talk to you in just a second. I really appreciate you talking to us. We'll talk to you in just a second. All but right. for now, we're going to send it back to you guys into the studio, and we'll come back and, and really regroup here in just a moment. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Daniel. And we are continuing our team coverage now of this devastating fire that is now on hour three of burning. Eyewitness News reporter Anna Saunders has been out there talking with people live all afternoon. And Anna, what are you learning? Yeah, Dave, Gina, we just continue to hear more and more heartbreaking stories from some of the 35 people who lived inside of those apartments. Now, luckily, we are told that they made it out okay, but as you can imagine, so many belongings lost, so many clothes, people talking about their medicines. Nobody really knows what to do next. Red Cross is here on scene. One of the churches along Canal Boulevard has also opened up their doors to the displaced. But I want to also show you the scene right now, just the heavy smoke presence still here, still fighting these fires. Even still flames coming out of the top. Um, every fire crew in Charleston here tonight trying to, to fight these fires as the smoke just continues to go all through. The, it can be seen really all throughout the city. As I mentioned, 35 people were inside the building at the time, and, and many were, were smelling it at first and able to, to get out. A lot of folks saying that fire alarms were not going off when this happened and that is of course something that we're continuing to follow and something we'll continue to press as this as this week goes about but we are we are just continuing to hear from people who who do not have a home 35 people inside of that apartment now without a home now without a home now without any any of their belongings trying to figure out what's next we actually spoke with a man who was homeless two weeks ago. This was one of his first uh, first homes in a while. He was excited about that. He had been living here for two weeks, and then this happened. So, we're, again, we just continue to hear heartbreaking stories from people here tonight, and we'll continue to follow those throughout the evening as we report live out here. But for now, in Charleston, Anna Saunders, Eyewitness News. All right, Anna, thank you. And now we're going to head over to meteorologist Brandon Lawson. And Brandon, I guess the big question right now is it's a little windy out this afternoon. How is this going to affect the fire and trying to put it out? Yeah, so the real thing is it's not only affecting the fire, it's also blowing that smoke throughout the city, too. I still have that live look. This is usually the Oakwood, Washington, 5 one camera, but they are shooting across the Canal River here to get a view of that smoke. Now, as days went tonight, it's a little harder to see it, but you can still see that plume. It's right in here as it extends from the Regal Apartments as it gets up into the upper atmosphere here. That wind gust continues to blow it. So temperatures right now, upper or mid to upper 50s, but notice your wind out of the west-southwest at 13 miles per hour. This is just the sustained wind, folks. We only we have a sustained wind at 13 miles per hour. We're gusting much higher than that. We've got gusts between 25 and 35 miles per hour here, and we're going to continue to see that through the evening. you got to remember that these gusts are because of this area of low pressure that we have moving through, and we've got a line of gusty showers moving through here. So many folks are saying, oh, the rain's here. That could help the firefighters battle the fire a bit more. But unfortunately, this is a line of gusty showers. So this is 
is likely making these gusts a little bit stronger out there as this line of showers moves through. So something to keep in mind there as well. So something I do want to mention a little bit of the fire risk here again with the smoke concerns that we have in downtown Charleston, really around downtown Charleston, the east side and west side of Charleston filling with smoke. Anyone with respiratory issues, I wouldn't recommend being outside there. Also older adults, younger children, uh, any folks that might have diabetes, that could be a concern as well with the smoke that is uh, continuing to fill into the city. And uh, any uh, woman, woman that women that might be pregnant at the moment, that could also deal with some uh, concerns for, from the smoke. So just some things to keep in mind. These would be folks that are more at risk from being outside for long extended periods of time if you're going to be out in the smoke. Again, we're going to continue to monitor the wind gusts. They're going to stay strong throughout the evening. We're also going to monitor that smoke as it continues to extend from the Regal Apartments. So we're going to go ahead and toss things back over to Dave and Gene at the desk. Thank you, Brandon. And we've been covering this story. It's been going on for more than three hours. We're actually going to head back out to the scene. That's where Daniel Burbank is. Yeah, and just to keep you up, back up to speed, uh, this fire broke out, like Gina said, about a little more than three hours ago in the 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East. A lot of people are without a home tonight, but the Red Cross comes in and helps people in these situations. Daniel Burbank joins us live right now. And Daniel, what can you tell us? Dave, Gina, as the situation continues to unfold, as we mentioned, the Red Cross has, has been here for just about a half hour now, and I'm joined by Angela Akers working with uh, the Red Cross. And I mean, this is a busy, busy day for you. So kind of uh, get us up to speed on where the Red Cross is right now. So right now, what our main focus is, is getting these residents somewhere to go tonight and get them out of this cold weather. Uh, they are very distraught. We have approximately 32 units that have uh, our you know, unfortunately, they are destroyed and that we will be working with them throughout the week now, making sure that they get some housing and some assistance. Right now, they're staying at the church located next door to the, to the structure fire. That's where our zero ground zero is, where we're communicating with them and the apartment manager as well. And so when when people watching tonight say, you know, what can I do to help? They're watching this. They're seeing that 32 units and probably dozens of people's lives changed like that. And so when you see people watching tonight, what's what's the best thing they can do to help you all? You know, right now, as you know, one, they need their thoughts and their prayers for sure, because a lot of them are distraught. We do think we have some housing for them to go to, but it's going to take about 10 to 14 days to get them there. So they're going to need some resources. They're going to need some food and some sheltering. So you can reach out to, you know, RedCross.org and reach out and make donations and, and stuff to them. So in between, you know, obviously this is day one. As you mentioned, we're at round zero in a way. And so how do we get from minute zero to day 10 and day 14, you know, when, when those residents can potentially get into a new space and basically start over. What Red Cross, we're going to be here with them until we get them into those residents. We're going to be here day and night. We're going to put boots on the ground. That's what we do. We're here for them. Boots on the ground. You're still here set up at yep. the church. And so what is the the, the mood really in, inside that church right now? They're very distraught. We got people rolling in right now that weren't aware of the structure fire. People's been trying to call them. You know, they don't know where they're going. They have no clue. They're very upset. They're, you know, they're just settled right now. So we got a team here right now. They're talking to individuals. They're being comforting, you know, letting them know that we are here. And right now that's my next step is to go get a game plan and get them that shelter going. And getting a game plan, finding out that shelter. And so what, what, uh, Again, just to recap, you know, is there a certain uh, uh, website or a certain phone number that people can call or, or email into, you know, to help the Red Cross? They can go to redcross.org and they can reach out. Is there any closing thoughts that, that you'd really like to say to anyone that's watching tonight, you know, about... About, I mean, this is a big fire. This and is so a, is this one of the biggest that you've seen, or how does this stack up against others? Um, this is one of the biggest ones that I've done here locally in Kanawha County. So it is very large. The community is stepping up. I've had many people coming out to me and asking what they can do. So we're getting snacks and water brought to the church. Then we had some people that are volunteering to bring food and meals in. So we're going to work together, get a game plan, and make sure that these folks are taken care of. It's going to be an hour-by-hour -hour process, but we're here to do the job. Teamwork, that's definitely the mood. Teamwork, yes, teamwork. And, and prayers and being Absolutely. with everyone. And so has reality set in for, for really the people that are in that shelter with you right now? Um, we have several that have set in. We have one gentleman who keeps coming us. He keeps thanking me left and right and giving me a hug. He's very upset. He was asleep when the smoke alarm went off. He about not got out of his home. He was actually rescued by a firefighter. He is just beyond himself, and we're here, and we've been really helping him through. We'll definitely get some spiritual care on scene as well and some disaster mental health as well. One thing that, and the mental health is very important. I'll, I'll ask you a question in just a second, but one thing that's interesting is you noted that he heard a smoke alarm. 
Ha have you heard that other residents are saying that they heard smoke alarms? Or that's actually the first one that we've heard today that said, hey, I heard a smoke alarm. Correct. I can't confirm or deny if there were smoke alarms that went off on that on that residence or not. I'm, yeah. Yeah, no worries. And so the mental health aspect, not only for the residents, for the firefighters, but for you all. How are you all doing right now? We're doing well. We're mighty and strong. Our Central and Southern team, I couldn't be more proud of my team. I called them with the need. We traveled from Raleigh County immediately. We jumped in vehicles, got here. We also have people from surrounding County, all County the here. I got a team on standby right now, which I'm getting ready to call. We're here. We're, we're ready to go. Nothing tires us. We, as my shirt says today, we don't stop when we're tired. We stop when we're done. Okay. And so whenever this is done, that could be a day, two days, a week, a month. We still don't know yet. We just don't know the time frame yet. I really appreciate you talking you're to welcome. us. Be safe out there and, and we appreciate it. Right, you're welcome. And so as you know, just to recap what we've talked about, the boots on the ground, the Red Cross are here. They have that shelter that's set up. And so the disaster coordinator is going to be coordinating with their Red Cross team to figure out what to do next as this continues to evolve and, and really everything sinks in. I mean, we saw that a resident came up to us and, and he was distraught, he was in shock, and we did the best off camera also, of course, to comfort him. It's, it's, I think he was just a little bit turned around, you know, by everything that was just going on, where, uh, you know, some of these people, this, this is not the first fire I've covered, and one thing that we see is that really people just haven't been able to wrap their heads around what's going on just yet. And I'm just going to step out again. I want Manny to, you know, pan up. He's been a great photojournalist for, he's been here really with me since the beginning. And, and I mean, we see that the smoke, it's continuing to billow. We can see that orange glow from the fire just beyond this second building that, you know, the, the chief, the fire chief said that they're continuing to try and protect. And uh, we see that now the what looks like the fourth floor, it's almost completely gone. We see the flames that have taken over the fourth floor, and no doubt, just with the amount of time, I mean, we're talking about three plus hours of firefighters being here, and, and probably we're approaching hour four at this point. And so all that water comes down, it waterlogs the building, and I mean, as the mayor had mentioned, that, you know, just along with the Red Cross and confirming with the fire department that this is a total loss and people are not going to get in anytime soon. Uh, for now, live on the Canal Boulevard, Daniel Burbank. Eyewitness News. Daniel, thank you so much for that report. And those people are so lucky, Gina. Yeah. This all could have been so much worse. It is still is terrible, but just to think. Yeah, nobody was hurt, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want to donate, go to redcross.org. I'm sure everybody could use as many supplies as possible. And make sure to stay with us. Follow all of our platforms because we will continue to cover this news tonight. We'll be right back. And welcome back, everyone. We are still covering breaking news. Uh, about three and a half hours ago, a fire broke out at Regal Apartments in the 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East. Several people are homeless tonight. We're talking more than two dozen. 75 firefighters, which basically is the entire Charleston Fire Department, on scene, still battling the blazes. This is a live look right now. Yeah, you can still see some flames right there. It's still a very active scene. Uh, as Dave said, dozens of people have been displaced tonight, and they could use your help. If you would like to help, you could send donations to the redcross.org. I'm sure they could use something across the board, whether that be uh, supplies. Um. Now let's send it over to Brandon Lawson with a check of our forecast. Hey, Brandon. Hey there, guys. Going to wait for a camera to pop up here. Again, we've been tracking that smoke that continues to come up from the Regal Apartments. This will pop up momentarily. Just give my system a second to load. So notice we have went to nighttime here, but you could still see that smoke clear as day over across the Canal River here. Look at this, again, plume of smoke just continuing to fill out of the Regal Apartments. And this is also continuing to fill the city as well. We've got gusts between 25 and 35 miles per hour, possibly gusting up to 40 with this gusty line of shower we have moving through. I mean, this is just kind of a wild seed here. You see all the uh, nighttime. You can see the Capitol building here, and then you've got the smoke plume right there in the middle. And I can't stress this enough. There are some concerns when it comes down to that smoke. The most at risk when it comes down to the smoke that is filling the city would be anyone with respiratory issues. That means 
heart, lung disease, uh, other respiratory issues as well. Any older adults, younger children as well. Uh, any folks that might have uh, diabetes and any women who are pregnant as well, you definitely don't want to be out in this, not at all, uh, if you are a woman and you're pregnant at the moment. I do want to mention with these lists, again, you just don't want to spend extended periods of time outdoors. So here's that smoke again continuing to fill the city. Here's this gusty line of showers that's moving through right now. So normally you'd say, okay, rain's going to help kind of these firefighters put this uh, fire out here. But not only is it raining, this rain is also extending those gusts as well into the region here and into the Canal Valley. So again, we are in a valley that will continue to allow that smoke to fill the valley here. You can actually see another line of showers developing back to our west. Not sure if that one's going to hold together. This is all an area of low pressure that continues to filter through the area. So it's moving to the northeast. That's allowing these showers to continue to move in. You've got more wraparound moisture that will pull in with that. So here's a look at the wind gusts. This is actually it was just clocked at the Yeager Airport. 22 mile per hour gusts there. 31 mile per hour gusts in Huntington right now. So these gusts are going to continue, folks. I mean, this is going to be the breezy evening that these firefighters do not need right now. You're going to have these gusts continuing between 25 and 35 miles per hour. And even tonight, the gusts still are going to be pretty high. 25, 30 mile per hour gusts and throughout the day tomorrow we're going to stay breezy too. Now it's back to reality when it comes down to winter folks. Today was relatively warm. It felt springy out there. We're back in the 30s tomorrow and Friday and then 50 degrees by Saturday. And then on Sunday we get more rain showers building back in. Temperatures becoming a bit more seasonable out there. We do have a little bit of an icy risk tonight. More of a lower threat for the bridges and overpasses. Elevated roads would be my main concern with that as well. So the cold air returning tomorrow Here's a look at your day planner tomorrow. Cold air back, temperatures in the 30s, scattered snow showers throughout the day. So here's future cast. Again, showers should taper off here a bit, and that should allow that gust to alleviate a bit as well. Then tomorrow morning, yeah, we're waking up to scattered snow showers out there. I mean, just look at these scattered snow showers just continuing into the afternoon. Maybe some light accumulations on the grassy areas, elevated surfaces. Eastern mountains will likely see a couple of inches from this, if not more, in the higher elevations. Then by Friday morning, is tapering off when we get the sun back around here. So that's good news for us. At least Friday afternoon we'll see the sun, but it'll still be cold. Upper 30s for high temperatures. 50 degrees on Saturday. Then notice for the second half of the weekend here on Sunday, those rain showers return. We're back in the mid-40s. We'll stay in the 40s for Monday through Wednesday of next week. But next week kind of looks gloomy. Again, we're going to see those temperatures seasonable, but we're going to also have to deal with some unsettled weather too. Looks like rain, maybe even a little bit of snow mixing in as well. That's a full look at your seven-day forecast, but we're going to continue to cover that fire at the Regal Apartments. We've got team coverage. It's right after this. We continue our breaking news coverage right now of the Regal Apartments, which caught fire about three and a half hours ago right there in the 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East. Everyone did make it out safely. Nobody got hurt. More than 75 firefighters are on scene right now. Yeah, and this is an all hands on deck kind of a situation. It's still, as you can see, a very active scene right there. The flames still coming through the top of that building and People there need your help. So if you need, if you would like to help, you can send donations to redcross.org. We're going to send things over to Anna Saunders. She's been on scene all day talking to people who have were residents in that building. And Anna, what can you tell us right now? Yeah, we're hearing that about 35 people now displaced. That's how many people lived inside the building. They are calling it a, a total loss. If you want to take a look at the scene behind me, we're kind of on the other side of Canal Boulevard uh, where crews are still continuing to battle this fire. It has been going on now for hours, and it, you can still see the flames there through the trees. We're also here at the uh, Living Word Christian Center. This is where it has kind of become a bit of a gathering place on, uh, on short notice for people to come. They just open their doors to allow some of the displaced to, uh, to come in here tonight and, and be in it. They've just brought in pizza recently to just kind of to give people something to, to eat tonight. It's just kind of a it's just been a very spontaneous sort of situation trying to figure out what to do next and how to help these people.
situation here. They've, they've just opened their doors to allow people to come in here tonight. Um, one thing to mention, though, a lot of this block, they've, they've shut off the power as sort of a precautionary measure. So they've shut off the power. So they're without power. They're in there with flashlights, trying to get people fed, trying to get them just kind of a, a place to come in and just and just take a seat right now. But we just continue to hear more and more heartbreaking stories from people just about this situation as so many are displaced tonight without a place to go. For now, live in Charleston, Anna Saunders, Eyewitness News. Thank you very much, Anna Saunders, live on the scene there at the apartment fire in the 1400 block of Canal Boulevard East. I think we're going to go to commercial break real quick. We'll yep. come back and we will talk to, uh, actually, let's go to Brandon Lawson right now. Brandon, you've been following this story, this fire in Charleston on social media. What are people saying? Any uh, photographs or video clips? Numerous photograph and video clips are coming in through social media here. I mean, you can just see from wherever you are around Charleston. This is actually from the South Side Bridge here. You can see the smoke rolling up from the Regal Apartments there. Also, earlier today, uh, a friend of mine, Mick Wiseman, sent me a photo. This is actually in downtown Charleston. Likely a bit more smoke in this now, but you can see how smoke was filling downtown Charleston here. Again, if you have to be outdoors at all, especially in the inner city of Charleston, I wouldn't recommend being out for extended periods of time because there's a lot of views like this, a lot of smoke, and a lot of at-risk people with that smoke. So just be very careful when you're out and about. Dave, Gina. Follow us. We will be continuing to follow this developing story tonight. So stay with Eyewitness News. Follow all of our platforms. We'll be right back.